Now, in the previous lessons that we had last week, we learned about how to use the periodic table in order to see how the electrons of the, the, the elements in the periodic table are arranged. And we started with the block. So we have the S, the P, the D, and the F blocks. Let's recall again, how many orbitals do we have in the S block? S Two. block, how many orbitals? Oh, uh, how many orbitals? There's one orbital. And so how many electrons, maximum number of electrons in the S orbital? Two. So one orbital, two electrons. That's why there are two columns in the S. Next is the P block. How many orbitals do we have in the P block? Six, six. The orbitals. Three. three orbitals. So maximum of how many electrons? Six. six. That's why we have the P block in the last six columns of the periodic table. And then the D block, how many orbitals do we have? Five. There are five. So a total, a maximum of? Ten. Ten electrons. And lastly, the F block has how many? orbitals seven and that's a maximum of 14. 14 electrons and then later on we went through the order of the increasing energy level and the first energy level that has to be filled up is the 1s and because in the 1s it's an s with one orbital the maximum electrons are two so that's why the first filled orbital is 1s2 okay we go all the way to helium we go all the way to helium for the 1s2 and then the next one is, look at your periodic table. What's after 1s2? The white periodic table. It's what? What's this row here? 2s2. 2s2. And what's after 2s2? 2p6. 2p6. And then? 3s2. Then? 3p6. Then the moment you have the fourth row, you have the first is? 4s2. 4s2. And what's after 4s2? 3d10. You get 3d10. And then? 4p6 and then after 4p6 we have 5s2 and then 4d10 and then 5p6 after 5p6 6s2 but in the sixth row what do we have we need to what you go down where is it 4f14 very good so 4f14 so after 6s2 4F14. Then we move up again. What's after 4F14? What? 5D10 and then 6P6 and then the last row we have 7S2 5F14 and then 6D10 and then the last 7P6. So that's the order of the energy level. Now, let's go beyond that and let's look at the six elements here on the table. So look at this. This is now, we will now apply what we have learned <clears throat> with that increasing energy level according to the elements here. Now, everybody, can you glance at hydrogen here? The very first element in the periodic table. Hydrogen is the first element in the periodic table. What is the atomic number of hydrogen? One, and we know that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons, which is also equal to the number of electrons in a neutral atom. So if hydrogen is located here, and looking at this periodic table that we have, its configuration is 1s1. So it's written here, 1s1, correct? Now, how do we make an orbital diagram from what we know about hydrogen. So remember that the 1 is S1 is the electron configuration of the single electron of hydrogen. So 1S means that that electron is located in the first energy level, S orbital, and the superscript will tell you that that's the total number of electrons. So 1 is the atomic number. It should match with what is the superscript. So 1S1. Then how do we draw the orbital diagram from the electron configuration? So we know that S always has one orbital, so therefore we draw only one box. Okay? The box represents the number of orbitals. S will always have one box representing one orbital. Can you guess how many boxes for the P? Three. No. Three boxes, six electrons all in all. So three boxes for P. How about in the D? Five. Five boxes. And then the F, lastly, there should be seven boxes. Okay, so for the S. So one S, I draw one box. 
Then I label it just 1s. Why 1s? Because that superscript 1 electron has to be drawn as an arrow. Oh. One arrow pointing up as the first entering electron. Conventionally, the first entering electron should be pointing up. And the pair will be the arrow pointing down. So this is how the orbital diagram of hydrogen looks like. The label is here. And the 1s1 represents the electron configuration. And this number here represents the atomic number. Any questions? Let's proceed to the next element. We have neon. Can you locate neon on your periodic table, please? Okay. Where is neon? Okay, neon is? Okay, it's here, right? What's the atomic number of neon? It's 10. So it's here, 10. So if you look at this white periodic table, neon is 10, so it's until 2p6. Correct? So it's from the start until 2p6. So from the start, we have 1s2, 2s2, until we reach 2p6. Six. So if you look at the electron configuration of neon here, you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. If we're going to add all the superscript of neon, so you have 2 plus 2 plus 6, that's a total of 10. That's the atomic number of your neon. Okay? Now, on the side... You're shown here what we call the condensed electron configuration. This condensed, if you look at, 1s2 is cancelled. Instead, it is replaced by helium. Helium is one of the noble gases. You see, one of the noble gases before the element neon. When we talk about condensed electron configuration, just to insert it in, you're using all the noble gases only as a shortcut to cancel the previous configuration so if you want to shorten the 1s2 2s2 2p6 look at what's the noble gas everybody understands what's a noble gas it's always in the last column of your periodic table look at the noble gas before that element so h is the noble gas before neon because neon itself is a noble gas so you look at the noble gas before it so you have h e Enclose it in a bracket, and after HE, you proceed to 2S2, 2P6. So if HE has an atomic number of 2, then plus 2, plus 6, it will still be equal to 10. Okay? So that's just to insert the, no the noble gas configuration. So anyway, we won't be using the noble gas when we draw the orbital diagram. We're going to draw everything here, the expanded or uh, expanded electron configuration. So how do we do that? We have S and S, 1S and 2S. So one box for 1S, one box for 2S. Because it's a 2 here, that means I'll put two arrows for 1S and two arrows for 2S. And then 2P, I, I, we said that there should be three boxes for P, so there are three boxes here. And the six are all maximized, so therefore you're going to see all the paired arrows on the 2P6 boxes. So this is how the orbital diagram of neon looks like. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. How about lithium? Lithium has an atomic number of 3. This is easy because it's just going to be 1s2, 2s1. So therefore, 1s2, 2s1. When you draw orbital diagrams, the bottom should be the first energy level. It should go up when you increase your energy level okay how about this look at boron this is interesting boron has five as its atomic number five that means we're gonna have 1s2 2s2 2p1 that's a total of five so that's 1s2 we don't have a question here 2s2 we don't have a question but how do we draw 2p because there's just one electron in the 2p we might be thinking why not just draw one box now remember that the P, whether or not it's filled or not, we need to draw all the correct number of boxes or orbitals for the P, regardless if it's going to be filled in or not. So we have two P, so there are three boxes, but there's just one electron in the P, so you're going to draw the arrow up in any of the three boxes, not necessarily in the first, as long as there's one electron. Now remember that 
all the boxes, all the orbitals of the 2P are all of equal energy. They're all degenerate orbitals. Degenerate means that their energy levels are the same. So whether I put this in the second or the third, it won't matter. It's the same. And later on, we're going to realize that these empty orbitals have something to do with the bonding properties of this element. Later on, when we go to chemical bonding by next year. Okay? Now, carbon. Look at carbon here. Carbon has six as its atomic number. So six will give us 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Two electrons already in the P. But the P has three boxes. There's one possibility that you're going to do. What if we're just going to pair up the P for the P2? That will still give us two electrons, right? But there's a rule that says that all orbitals have to be filled in singly before you pair up. I said that the orbitals are degenerate. Degenerate means they have equal energy. So if they have equal energy, you need to distribute all the electrons first in all those degenerate orbitals, whether that's a P, that's a D, or that's an F. You need to distribute all the electrons first singly with the same direction before you pair them up. So the 2P2 is drawn single, 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 single. Miss Narka, can I put it on the last and second? Yes, as long as they're all single in the same direction. Do you understand? Okay, that's one thing you need to watch out when you are drawing. And then lastly, it's fluorine. Fluorine has an atomic number of 9, so therefore that's a 2P5. We don't have a question about how 2P5 looks like. There's no other way to draw a 2P5. This is how a 2P5 looks like. Any questions? Okay.